Good evening. We are dedicating our entire show to the fast moving developments out of England in the wake of the horrific attack on the Ariana Grande concert. Children, teens and families targeted. Tonight, the British Prime Minister has put the entire country on its highest threat level, warning another attack could be imminent. Meanwhile, we're learning much more about the suspect. We begin here tonight with ABC's Terry Moran in Manchester. Terry. Dan, tonight Manchester is quiet. It's been quiet all day. A great city subdued in shock and sorrow about what happened right back there at the Manchester Arena. The terror attack at the end of Ariana Grande's concert. 22 dead now, 59 injured, and so many of the victims, young people, teenagers, even children. And we are learning more tonight about the 22-year-old British-born attacker and about those harrowing moments of carnage and courage and love. They came out on a school night to see their idol. Thousands of teenage girls packing the arena. Just minutes after pop diva Ariana Grande finishes her encore in a shower of pink balloons. 10.33 p.m., the house lights come up, and then the sound of the bomb. Oh, my God. What's going on? What just happened? What's going on? Panic. Oh, my God. Confusion. Those pink balloons popping as the audience stampedes for the exits. <laughs> Girls clamber over railings, dropping into the crowd, desperate to escape. But then no. everyone started freaking out again, running. We had to climb over chairs, over railings to get out of doors that were actually locked, so we had to force them open. Carol Taylor was there with a friend and their children. And there was just smoke and like embers falling down from the from the roof, and people were screaming, and we just ran, ran, and ran. Bethany Keeling was right near the exit when the bomb went off. I saw like a flash, like an explosion flash. I grabbed my friend's hand and just just ran. Um, but we looked and we could see the bodies on the floor. Everybody around me just screamed and we just all ran and we just didn't know what to do. We thought somebody might have had like a gun or something. Victims were lying where they'd fallen. The ground was streaked with blood. I thought we were going to die. It was just horrendous. Police believe British-born Salman Abedi, 22 years old, detonated the suicide bomb here in an area connecting the massive arena to the nearby train station. It took the lives of 22 people, 12 of them children, injuring 59 more. The Sun newspaper publishing a Beatty's photo. Among the lives lost, 18-year-old Georgina Callender, a student studying health and social care. This picture of her and Ariana Grande was taken two years ago. And eight-year-old Safi Rose Russos died after being separated from her mother and sister. A teacher remembered her as simply a beautiful little girl in every aspect of the word who was loved by everyone. According to local news reports, Safi's mother was critically injured and still in the hospital. She might not even know what happened to Safi. And devastating news for the family of 15-year-old Olivia Campbell, who just this evening was confirmed dead. Excuse me. Her uncle just Stephen Hodgson and her mother had been searching girl. for the last 24 hours. You haven't seen this girl by any chance, have you? Olivia's mother, Charlotte, clutching a picture of her daughter. If anybody has seen her, please contact the police. Earlier today, making this plea. I'm going through hell. Like, like I can't even explain what I'm going through. I just, I need my daughter home. I need to know where she is. And well, we shouldn't have to do this. Charlotte posting on Facebook just hours ago, RIP my darling, precious, gorgeous girl, taken far, far too soon. Go sing with the angels and keep smiling. Mommy loves you so much. But among the horror, there was heroism. I just kept her up and just kept talking to her and telling her, you're going to be okay, darling, you're going to be okay. Parents Kim and Phil Dick sprang into action, saving a 14-year-old girl's life, even as they frantically searched for their own daughter and granddaughter. I mean, she was screaming out in pain. Her little arms and legs were all just broken, I could tell. And she was in so much pain and she was bleeding so bad. I just couldn't leave her. And I, I thought my girls were dead. And then, but I thought, I can't let this little girl die. Kim cradles the girl for nearly an hour, applying pressure to her wounds, even managing to contact her father. And thankfully, Kim's own family was safe and sound. 
all the time I was holding her and trying to be brave, I, was, I said to her, I was, I'm not going to leave you until your dad, till we find your daddy and until he comes. Joe Gregory was sitting in his car waiting to pick up his girlfriend. He sees the flash, hears the bang, and then it hits him. No! When the bomb went off, many parents were waiting outside to collect their kids after the show. For some of the youngsters, it was their first concert. Nick Hayward plunged into the fleeing crowd, searching for his daughter, Caitlin. I was outside, just outside the venue itself, when we heard a massive bang. Inside, you're thinking, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? And then you've got to think, I'm going to find her. I had that moment when I was working my way up the steps of, what am I going to find? You know, and in the back of your mind, you're thinking the worst. And then you saw her. Oh, just huge it. relief, huge relief, huge relief. It was almost like she'd been born again. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. As a dad, you must know that moment, yeah. And you just go, "This is the best moment of my life." It was that all over again. Sixty ambulances screeched to the scene. Specialized teams rushing in, transporting patients to area hospitals. Call an ambulance quickly. That we're able to stabilize patients at the scene. Um, ensure that they receive the right treatment at the scene before evacuation to the hospital. But children as young as eight are still unaccounted for as authorities try to frantically reunite families. Among the missing, Chloe Rutherford and Liam Curry, Courtney Boyle and her boyfriend, Philip Tron, Martin Hett, separated from his friends at the end of the show, and Wendy Fall, who hasn't been seen since the concert. Many taking their search to social media, pleading with users to help find the people still unaccounted for. For some, the social media pleas are working. This tweet indicating all of these people have been found. Let's keep going. The UK is now raising their terror threat level to critical, warning that more attacks could be imminent. It is a possibility we cannot ignore that there is a wider group of individuals linked to this attack. Manchester police, Interpol and UK law enforcement all in a frantic search to determine if the suspect had accomplices. Part of this response has seen us arrest a 23-year-old man in connection with the attack. A neighbor filming today as armed security forces raided the suspect's modest brick home, armed with rifles and shields. Unconfirmed reports of a gentleman in his uh, mid to late 20s being removed at gunpoint from the address and whisked off quite quickly by armed officers. In the midst of all this fear and loss, the humanity of the people here in Manchester is on full display. Taxi drivers gave free rides to those trying to escape, while local businesses and residents offered a warm bed, a spot of tea. Ariana Grande tweeted right after the concert, broken, from the bottom of my heart, I am so, so sorry. I don't have words. Today, Grande landing back in the U.S., greeted by her family in Boca Raton, Florida. So Around the world and at home, leaders condemning the heinous attacks. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers in life. I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. ISIS has claimed responsibility for this attack. Although they claim responsibility for virtually every attack, we have not verified yet uh, the, the connection. At home in the U.S., authorities are on high alert. They beefed up security at vulnerable open venues, ranging from sporting events to concerts. All around the world, signs of solidarity. The Eiffel Tower, the Colosseum in Rome, dark in honor of the lives lost. And here in Manchester, there is an unbreakable spirit as hundreds gathered to honor the 22 killed. Whatever our religion, whatever our beliefs or our politics, we will stand together. Nothing, not even terror, can shake their will to carry on. It's just sort of in our blood here that you just get on with it. Events in France and uh, in England, we've got to stand together and don't change. Because they want us to change, don't they? They want us to hide, they want us to stay in, to be frightened of going to concerts and soccer games. And, um, we're not going to do that. For Nightline, I'm Terry Moran in Manchester, England.